Hi, I'm Brandon with Gain of Trucking, coming to you with another training video today. Today we're going to talk about uh, a couple things that our truck drivers routinely run into, and this is not just limited to truck drivers, this is driving any vehicle, um, whether it be Gaina trucks or your own personal vehicle, this is something that every driver on the road constantly has to deal with. We're going to talk specifically about speeds and following distances. Safe speeds, how to judge your speed, how to determine safe speed, and what excess speeding can do. First thing we're going to talk about is speed limits, okay? The speed limits, as far as going over them, we never go over them. Those are set in stone rule, okay? There's no exception to that rule. There's no gray area to that rule. You don't ever go over the posted speed limit, okay? That is an absolute maximum. And I say that because just because something is posted 65, 60, 35 miles per hour, that's the absolute maximum, okay? That doesn't mean you can always go that speed limit, okay? There's some things that go, there's a lot of things that go into what you should be driving, what speed you should be driving. Um, traffic congestion on the road, um, the road conditions, whether it's wet pavement or something like that. Um, the light conditions, if it's getting dusk or dark, that'll affect what speed you need to be going safely. And construction, which is something we routinely run into. Okay, so just because something's posted 65 doesn't mean that's your free pass to go 65 and nothing bad can ever happen to you. That's actually a common mistake a lot of people say after an accident or something happened. Well, I was going to, I wasn't doing anything wrong, I was going to speed limit. Well, on a beautiful, clear, sunny day, 65 miles per hour might be the perfectly acceptable speed to be traveling on. But wind and snow and ice and darkness and traffic congestion and road construction, that take things like that into account, you might have to lower it down to 45 or something like that different conditions will dictate different safe speeds. Now, when we're talking about safe speeds um, that you need to be traveling, it, it's very important you put some of that into context, okay? Um, it's easy to think when you compare speeds on the interstate of 75 miles per hour, or 65 miles per hour on highways, things like that, it's easy to compare that to 25 miles per hour to think, I'm not traveling that fast, which is true in comparison to those upper speeds, you're not. But traveling 25 miles per hour, if you really dial that down, that is still about 37 feet per second at the end of the day, okay? So that's still, considering human reaction time and all the things that happen, have to happen, if a hazard presents itself, that's still pretty fast. Um, just to put some of this into context, and there's gonna be a lot of numbers, so I, I apologize, but it, it, it gives you a clearer picture of why this is so important, I think. At 75 miles per hour, you're moving at about 110 feet per second. 65 miles per hour, you're moving about 95 feet per second. At uh, 45 miles per hour, you're moving about 66 feet per second. And again, at 25 miles per hour, you're moving about 37 feet per second. So a second is hardly any time at all. A lot can happen in a second. And if you look at those speeds that I just listed off, that's an eternity when hazards present themselves. The closing distance between you and the hazards is so quick that the faster you go in terms of feet per second. Why these feet per second are so important, so you gotta take into account when a hazard does present itself, okay? So let's say that you're driving down the road, this is just gonna be an example here, and you do see something that you know, that you recognize that this is a hazard, I have to stop this truck or significantly slow down or take some kind of evasive action. Well, it sounds simple just to say that I see something and I have to do something. Well, there's actually a few things that have to happen in a certain order for your body to actually do that. Um, one, first thing that has to happen, you have to physically see the hazard. So if you're daydreaming or looking out the window or looking at the radio, that adds more time to it. You have to physically see the hazard. Two, your brain has to recognize that it is a hazard. Just because you see it, your brain's got to catch up a little bit to your eyes and say, that is something in the road or that's coming onto the road that I'm going to have to make an adjustment to. Stop, slow down, whatever it may be. Um, then th your third step here, your brain has to make a decision on how to avoid the hazard. Okay, whether that be I'm going to bring this truck to a stop, I'm going to slow it down, I'm going to swerve and take some evasive action, something like that. Your body has, your brain has to decide what it's going to do. Now four is when your body actually starts making those movements. Okay, so if your brain sees it and you decide I have to slow down. Now your right foot's got to come up and start hitting brakes, okay? 
And five, and this is the final one, this is when the mechanics on the truck actually start taking effect. Now the brakes have to start operating. All these five steps that we went through, there's not a lot of time per each step, but there's fractions of a second in each one of these steps. When you add that together, then you remember that you're traveling at a certain amount of feet per second. All that uses distance as you're getting closer to the hazard. That's why it's important to think of it that way, okay? These five steps that we just went over and gave a little detail on each step, that is your absolute best case scenario. That's presuming you're looking right at the road, okay? That's presuming that the mechanics on the truck are working. That's presuming you make the right decision and you don't him haw in your mind about what the best decision would be. That's all the best case scenario. Now, imagine that's not the best case scenario. Imagine you're looking out the window when the hazard comes out there, okay? Or something is wrong with your brakes, or you do decide too late to make the right decision, or the road is a little wet, so your stopping distance is increased, okay? All these things are gonna have an amplified effect as we get deeper into this, okay? For a human, for an average human, um, to see something and then start reacting physically is about a half second. So we're gonna go through a scenario here and I want you to keep that in mind as we get started, okay? So the example we're gonna go over here, um, I'm gonna set the scene a little bit here. Imagine that you're going 65 miles per hour in a uh, class A truck, you know, side dump truck, tractor and trailer, and then a hazard presents itself 300 feet in front of you, okay? First thing that's gonna happen is one half second for you to do anything considering the human reaction time. And in that one half second, you've went 48 feet, okay? Now in another half second, the truck begins to slow, okay? Because in that first half second, you saw the risk. You've decided it was a risk. You've decided you're gonna start breaking the truck. So first half second's gone, now the second half second, and the truck begins to slow down. So we're up to one full second now, and the truck has went another 48 feet, okay? Step three, the brakes begin to actually take effect in the next second. And you've gotten the speed down from 65 miles per hour to 55 miles per hour, okay? But in that one second, you went another 88 feet, okay? Step four, another second goes by. And the brakes have really started to do what they're designed to do, really start bringing you to a good stop here, okay? They started to do their thing really well. So you get it down from 55 to 40 within the next second. But in that second, you went another 70 feet, okay? Now five, another second goes by, and you get it from 40 miles per hour down to 20 miles per hour. But now you went another 49 feet. And we're actually gonna stop right there because we've already went 303 feet. If you remember back from the beginning of this scenario, the hazard um, that we saw was 300 feet in front of us, okay? So whatever that hazard was, an animal, another car, who knows what it was, you're already three feet on top of it now. And that took all of four seconds to get there. And that's at 65 miles per hour, okay? And this was a best case scenario and you still didn't get stopped in time. Now imagine it's not a best case scenario, okay? You didn't see the hazard right away. Your reaction time was just a bit slower and you were fully loaded. So the brakes couldn't get you down, couldn't get you slowed down in time, okay? I think that's a very good example of why it's very important to monitor your speeds to make sure you're taking all the environmental factors around you, all the traffic factors to make sure you're traveling at a safe speed. Now, we talked about speed. Equally as important is keeping a view out for hazards and your following distances, okay? Um, controlling your speed is one way to control your risk. It's a great way to control your risk out there, but another is keeping the potential hazards, traffic or whatever it may be, away from you. Keep the following distances long enough to allow you time to avoid a collision. Um, different distances for different conditions again. A fo safe following distance on a bright, sunny, clear, dry day is going to be significantly different than a rainy day or a snow-packed road or at night, okay? So just like speed, safe speeds change from day to day and condition to condition, safe following distances will also change depending on those same things. Okay. The reason this is so important is because driving speeds and following distances are probably the two biggest factors in catastrophic accidents and preventable accidents. Okay, If you were in somebody because they came to somewhat of an abrupt stop, it doesn't matter most of the time. I have never seen a driver been cited for slowing down too quickly in traffic. Okay. 
Usually what happens is they go to the driver who rear-ended them and say, you were following too close or you were driving too fast for conditions and that's where the citation lands, okay? And quite frankly, they're right. Again, speeds are in your control. That's a good thing, that's a bad thing. If you take control of that and drive at appropriate speed and give people plenty of following distances, you've avoided the risk and you may never get into an accident. I know we've covered a lot of ground. I'm gonna make one more point here. Um, it's still very much keeping with speeds. We talked a lot about driving too fast for conditions. Now there's another other side of the coin to this. Uh, because of the size of our trucks, there's no CDL vehicle in history that's really had a lot of zip to it, a lot, of, a lot of get up and go. They do not accelerate quickly. They never have and quite frankly, they never will. Um, so that's something you also have to consider is how slow am I gonna go when I pull out into traffic, when I merge onto this road, things like that, okay? So in your personal vehicle, when you come to a stop sign and turn onto a highway, you don't have to allow as much time for oncoming traffic, okay? Because you can get out there and those vehicles accelerate a lot more. We actually have a short video clip we're gonna to show too. Now this is just a gain of truck with a gain of driver on a highway just north of the shop here. What we did, we went to a stop sign, waited for traffic to clear, and then just pulled out on the uh, highway as we would any number of times a day, and just videoed it as we get up to 60 miles per hour to get up to a good road speed there, okay? I just want you to see, I'm not gonna do any narration during it. We're gonna have a little timer going just to get the full idea of how long it takes to go from zero to road speed in one of our trucks. Now this is something we all do on a daily basis if you're a driver for gaming trucking, but it's very easy to fall in trap of getting complacent with that and getting in front of traffic, presuming the traffic's gonna see you and stop. They might not always stop. They might not always see you. You don't know what's going in that car. That's why it's important to really understand how long it takes your vehicle to get up to a good road speed there so that you can budget enough time when you're pulling onto the highway. We actually have a short video clip we're gonna to show too. Now this is just a gain of truck with a gain of driver on a highway just north of the shop here. What we did, we went to a stop sign, waited for traffic to clear, and then just pulled out on the uh, highway as we would any number of times a day, and just videoed it as we get up to 60 miles per hour to get up to a good road speed there, okay? I just want you to see, I'm not gonna do any narration during it. We're gonna have a little timer going just to get the full idea of how long it takes to go from zero to road speed in one of our trucks. Now this is something we all do on a daily basis if you're a driver for gain of trucking, but it's very easy to fall in the trap of getting complacent with that and getting in front of traffic, presuming the traffic's gonna see you and stop. They might not always stop, they might not always see you. You don't know what's going in that car. That's why it's important to really understand how long it takes your vehicle to get up to a good road speed there so that you can budget enough time when you're pulling onto the highway. I do appreciate your time today watching this. I know this was um, one of the more drier videos we've had to do, dealing with a lot of numbers and just a lot of boring things like speed and following conditions, but we have to deal with it because it's very important. Um, these are significant factors when it comes to many catastrophic accidents that you see out on the road. So it's something we have to be constantly vigilant about, no matter how long we do this, no matter how long you've been driving, whether this is your first year driving or this is your 40, 50 year driving. This is something that's gonna be with us every day every mile we're out on that road, okay? Again, as always, if you have a question, by all means, ask a question. If you have a thought, an idea, a comment, concern, anything, please let us know. Um, 
But that's where we're going to end it today. Thank you for everything.